I want to welcome everybody here. This is truly an exciting day that I can finally know that my running mate is here, my partner is here, and that uh, we can move this franchise forward because it's going to take both of us and a lot of other people as well. First of all, I want to thank our boss because without her, as well as the family, we wouldn't be here, the bus family. So uh, we want to thank you, Jeannie, and the entire bus family for really picking us and deciding that uh, you put your trust in us. And so thank you. Um, Rob is an incredible young man. He's very intelligent, smart. He built a successful business. He knows talent because his business was a sports agency. So that's what I like about him as well to represent one of the greatest players that's ever played this game and who wore the Laker jersey proud and to understand what that meant and negotiate great contracts for not only Kobe but for the rest of his client. That meant a lot to me and while we're sitting here, let's give him a hand. Kobe Bryant is here, which is great. <clears throat> And what I like about Rob, he's competitive like I am. He wants to win. He knows how to win. He's an expert at the new CBA. He's teaching me the CBA right now as we speak. He understands the salary cap. He has relationships throughout the league, which is very important. He understands college talent because he's been recruiting them for many, many years to represent them. He understand the new age player because he represents so many of them. I'm talking about in the NBA. And so when I thought about who I wanted to really start this journey with and who could I pick that would um, complement my style and the way I am and also who is strong where I'm weak and it was no other than Rob. And we have the same personality. We have just a, a, a passionate love for this franchise. I wanted somebody who understood the Lakers and what it means to represent the Lakers. And Rob knows that better than anybody out here. And so this is an exciting day for me and the Laker organization. And the only negative thing about Rob, he went to the University of Michigan. <laughs> and um, so I thought about that, mm, but I said I wouldn't hold that against him. But uh, Rob, I love you, man, and we're about to embark on something that uh, only God could bless us to do together. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with you. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to my running mate and a person that uh, together we're gonna turn this franchise around and we're gonna build it block by block. And it's gonna take us a little time, but we're gonna get there. And last but not least, we're both looking forward to working with Luke because I, he's the right man for the job and is doing a tremendous job of uh, really working with our young, talented guys and his coaching staff. And uh, so we're both looking forward to doing that. So brother, I'm gonna turn the mic over to you. I'm a little bit of a storyteller by nature. Um, so I, I think I'll, Magic and I agreed that as we help run this franchise, um, that we wanna do things a little bit differently. Um, not just doing things differently for the sake of being different, but to put the Lakers back on the proper place of being the gold standard franchise in all of sports for others to look at and try to emulate. Because that's what Dr. Buss did with this team um, and what, what our calling is here. But I guess the first story I would tell is when Magic and I first got together um, and started talking about this with Jeannie's support, it became instantly clear that the vision was completely like-minded. Um, 
we had a common faith. We felt like this was a calling to do something great and critically important. Uh, the Lakers franchise um, serves really two things. It serves our players and it serves the fans of this incredible, incredible team. And we felt a vision to make sure that we did that with excellence in all things. And that was the first words that Irvin used when we sat down. He said, Rob, my wife Cookie's been praying about this, so you know some good things are gonna start to happen. But he immediately started focusing on the term, a commitment to excellence and being best in class in everything we do. Mm -hmm. And it's to share that vision and that commitment to putting in the work is, is what the two of us are gonna be about. Um, another story that, that really kind of hit home for me about this day and made it come full circle uh, is I'll never forget in May of 2007, the Lakers franchise was kind of at a pivot point, maybe similar to now where um, the expectations for greatness were not happening. And at the time in Kobe's career, um, I remember we sat down and, and we said, well, what's, what's the best way to spark things and, and make sure Laker greatness returns? And like only the Black Mamba do, can do, he went on Stephen A. Smith's show and did what the Black Mamba does in terms of re-engaging everyone to get Laker greatness back. And what happened after that call to action, I'll never forget, and it was Dr. Buss called us up to his house like only he could and welcomed us into his home. And I'm sure Irvin has experienced this time and time and time again. And we sat around a table and everyone shared their vision and what needed to change. And there was collaboration, there was listening, there was thought exchange. It was powerful and you could tell, oh my goodness, Dr. Buss is Dr. Buss because of the way he treats people and how he solves problems. And that's exactly what's gonna happen now in this organization. We have amazing leaders in this room and we are gonna all come together like Dr. Buss envisioned and we're gonna collaborate we're gonna exchange ideas. People's opinions are gonna be shared and respected. Jeannie and Irvin are gonna guide the vision and we're gonna all architect it. It is a call to action and it's a huge responsibility that we're all a part of. And that story and that day is embedded in my soul and embedded in this moment. And you know, there's been a lot of people that have said, hey, how did this, you know, sort of all come together in, in, a, in a town of movies, working 18 years side by side with all of the people in this organization. Maybe it's a little bit like when Harry met Sally, you know, it's like you spend enough time together and things happen, you know. <laughs> but um, I think um, there are a lot of people in the room that made today possible that I, I do want to thank. And one of the common threads in, in the people that have blessed me so much that are here is something that Tim Harris, uh, our CMO and COO, um, as we cast the vision for Lakers 2.0, we wanted to land on a word that meant something about who the Lakers are becoming and evolving into. And, and Tim came up with an amazing word that he shared with all of us yesterday. It was the word cares. And it's, it's interesting if you, if you even look at our name, Lakers, and you take the K and turn it into a C, it's, it's embedded in who we are. Um, I think for our players, first and foremost, for our fans, for the media relationships, for agents and GMs, for our brand partners, that's gonna be at the center of everything, is a true care and a true respect. And that's how this thing is gonna be built. And Tim picked a perfect word for all of us to kind of center on as we, as we embark on this journey. And that word is a good launching pad for me into some of the people that I'm so grateful for, starting with Jeannie. 
Um, I've told her this in person so I can share it in public with my daughter Emery here, um, who's um, six years old. I see Jeannie as an incredible leader with courage and vision and a heart of gold and amazing intuition. And I think if, if we can work hard and we can stay committed to have a, a women owner of a sports franchise to raise a trophy with us someday that we're all a part of, I look at my daughter Emery and I say, your opportunities in this world are endless. Look at what Jeannie's done. And that's something to be proud to be a part of. And this day would not be possible without you and your family. Um, Janie, it's so nice for you to be here. It's just great to see you. And I've already enjoyed working with Joey and Jesse and everyone in the family stands for what's important. Um, I think having Kobe and Vanessa here <sighs> makes me speechless. Um, you all know them for the Laker lore, but I know them as best friends. And the 24 and the 8 and the Black Mamba, let's go back to the word cares for a second. Another story, my wife is on a trip to her college reunion. She, she's a pediatrician and went to Duke and uh, was back at Duke and I'm taking care of the kids, solo dad. <laughs> As you would imagine, my son, who at the time was probably four or five trips, and busts his, his head, you know, big bleeding out of his head. So I'm like, what do I do? I'm not a pediatrician. My pediatrician's gone. I call Kobe and Vanessa. The word cares. They give me the plan, and I show up at the emergency room to get my son stitched up. Who's there? Kobe and Vanessa Bryant. They beat me to the hospital. Who holds my son as the doctor is literally stitching up his cut? Kobe and Vanessa. I think of another trip when we go to Montana, just on a family camping vacation with the Bryants, and our daughter, Emery, is fussy and trying to eat and hold the food. Who? Who has the bottle and who's feeding Emery to make sure that she's getting nourished? Kobe, with his touch. Um, there's, I think, a verse in scripture that talks about true friends being more precious than gold. That is so the case with you guys. Um, Kobe, what Michelangelo is to art, what Beethoven is to music, what Shakespeare is to words, you are to me as a friend and you are to the Lakers. So, we thank you. That's right. Um, Coach Walton, uh, Irvin and I and Jeannie and everyone in leadership, we are, we could not have a better coach. Um, I've had an opportunity to work with players around the league uniformly, and I don't know how this is possible. Everyone loves you. Um, you have, this genuine honesty and coolness about you that just makes every player in the league want you to be their coach. And we're gonna capitalize on that and make sure you have the best talent in the world to coach this Lakers team. And there could not be a better person to do that. Um, Linda Rambis, is she here somewhere, I hope? If, again, if there's a person in, inside of this organization that stands for thought and care and not being an attention seeker and just making stuff happen, mm -hmm. she has been unbelievable behind the scenes, just making sure that needs are met and cared for. Um, she is a core and an anchor for all of us just with her steadfast service, and I, this day wouldn't be possible without her. Um, is Tim here, Tim Harris? Okay. We talked about him and his word, but again, a great member of our leadership, our leadership team. Um, I guess I'll, I'll close with this and, and then get to my family last. Um, we had an amazing meeting yesterday with all the leadership members here. 
Dan Grigsby, Joe McCormick, other amazing minds and key people in this organization. And that spirit of collaboration with Dr. Buss was happening yesterday. Visions were being ca cast and we are going to deliver on Jeannie's challenge to us all to make the Lakers the greatest sports franchise in the world. That will happen. Um, I'll close with this. My family is here, my wife, Kristen, my son, Durham, my daughter, Emery. Um, this is a new adventure. I love you guys even more because of it. I can't wait to go on it with all of you. Um, as Irvin has said to Cookie, we're as committed as husbands and as, as fathers as, as ever as part of this journey, and that will stay the same. And it's very important because Lakers is family. It's a family business, and that's important. So before we get to questions, I think, you know, I was, as I was driving in today, I was, I was mindful of a, of a verse that he and I talked about in, in Jeremiah, and it just says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper and to give you hope in a future. And that is true for this moment, for everyone here, for the Lakers, and we are just both thrilled and grateful to be a part of that unfolding plan. Thanks. Amen. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Rob, back to your right here. Uh, what do you think of the young talent so far? You haven't had that much time uh, on the ground here, so to speak. What do you think of it? We have some really, really strong young talent on this team. Um, but in terms of accountability, we're 29th out of 30 teams, and that's not acceptable. Like, we have to get better talent for Luke to coach. So we have to develop our young players, and there's some extraordinary young players, but we have to add to that core too. Um, our timeline is to, is to be aggressive and to grow with quality players. Um, so we'll develop our young guys. We have some amazing players and Brandon Ingram, you know, D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randle. I could go through the whole list, but Developing those guys is key, but then we have to add other significant players to that through free agency, and that's something that we're going to work really, really hard to do. Thanks, Jim. Absolutely. There's no way to separate Kobe's impact from the Lakers from everything we do. It's like the sugar that dissolves in your coffee in the morning. Once it's together, it's there forever. You can't. So he's 100% behind everything Laker and will continue to be um, and is in the DNA here and clearly drives Irvin and I and Jeannie and the rest of leadership as a North Star mm -hmm. without question. Yeah, he shares the same passion and love for this organization. So I'm looking forward to, we're all going to go to dinner and, and we're going to talk Lakers and talk basketball. One thing about Kobe, when you sit him down to talk basketball, he just, it, it's, it's, it's a clinic in a sense. And so with all three of us talking hoops, that's going to be wonderful. So I'm looking forward to it. We shared that upstairs just a few moments ago. Hey, hey Rob, oh, right here in the middle. Hey, Rob, okay. uh, just wondering, and Magic, maybe you could comment on this as well. Uh, how, how does your experience as an agent uh, over the years, how is that apl uh, applicable uh, in, in both ways, I suppose? And how, what are the things that are similar, and what are the things that you think could be different? Irvin did a great job on hitting on that early, but I think 20 years, it really gives you an insight into what's important to players and agents. And we have to build really strong relationship in that area, and relationships in that area. And if you've walked in those shoes, it helps you relate and build those bridges. Um, I've gotten to know what is important for a player when they sign to go to a franchise. And as we said at the onset, we have to deliver on those expectations and then become the leader of delivering that to players around the league. When players talk about the Lakers, we want that to be what everyone is chasing in terms of how they're treated, how they're coached, how the front office deals with them. So I've 
I've had a unique lens into all 30 franchises because I've had players on each and every team. So I think, you know, Irvin had pointed out that we can take bits and pieces from the good in all 30, uh, 29 other teams and add them to what we do, but we're not stopping there. We're not trying to replicate anything. Mm -hmm. We're trying to create our own identity here. Mm -hmm. um, so we will take bits and pieces, but then we're also going to have a very unique way of doing things. Uh, but I think also the mindset of general managers of teams and relationships with those general managers. And so that I was looking for that. So all the things that Rob talked about, but also his relationships with all the teams as well. Hi, Rob. To your earlier point about being aggressive and, and getting a lot of talent, what's a realistic timetable for all that to come to fruition where you guys are back at the championship level? You know, I, I'm hesitant to paint timelines, but what I'm not hesitant to do is that we are going to be committed to excellence every day. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to, all of these things are like a chess game. You've got to start moving pieces around the board before you can win the game. Mm -hmm. And we're committed, as of yesterday, when we had our first round table, we, we are implementing a plan as we speak and okay. in making moves to, to have the best talent in the league in this building. Um, and it won't stop until we accomplish the goal. But to predict whether that's one year or five years is impossible. What we can predict is the hard work we're going to put into making sure it happens. Exactly. Rob, right here. <clears throat> right here, here you go. How you doing, Rob? Uh, so the, go back 10 years or so, the Lakers had an intrinsic an advantage economically based on, on their market and their brand. And the last CBA in 2011, the current one, that's changed significantly as far as revenue sharing and equalizing the playing field. How do the Lakers have to do business now in this new environment? How do you get back to the top under these new rules? We, we still have an intrinsic advantage. You know, when Irvin put on the 32 and when Kobe put on the 8 and the 24, that can't be replicated anywhere on the globe with any other team. And we are going to make sure that that's how players that come here feel and want to be a part of this. We are getting back to that place. This LA platform, this Lakers brand, the Bus family and the legacy of winning cannot be replicated. So we have an intrinsic advantage. In terms of the cap and the maneuvering through that, we will do our best to be creative. And yes, there is a new CBA with, with a tilt towards players staying with their home team. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you stop being competitive to get the best. And we'll figure out a way to do it and use the advantages that we have to make sure it happens. And Rob led us yesterday in a great exercise of the next five free agent classes, the next five years in a row. So we understand how much they can receive from their team and also how much we can offer them. So the guy is already on top of it. He has a plan in place. I mean, we're, we're going to move forward. And uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yesterday we were off and running, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to go back to New York and uh, even get more details on the CBA, the new CBA, uh, and take a, a day and a half of sessions back in New York with the league. And uh, Commissioner Silver, like he does with every other team, so has allowed us to come in and uh, make sure we know everything in terms of the CBA and the new CBA. So we're looking forward to doing it. Hey, Rob, where, where, back here on the end, uh, where's your steepest learning curve? Obviously, just th there's a lot of skills that, that translate, but it's also a new, a new realm. Where's your steepest learning curve, and, and what's going to be the biggest challenge coming in? This franchise consists of 200 to 250 employees. And our job is to make sure that all of those team members are functioning as a well-oiled machine and together. And that's a big task, but something that's so important to Irvin and Jeannie that we are functioning as a unit 
and getting everyone working together, passionate about caring, doing the same thing, sharing the same message. I would say that's the biggest hill to climb, but also one of the exciting ones. We're moving across the street into the Lakers UCLA training center, which is a, the best in the world. And Lakers 2.0, as we move from this space into that, is a perfect opportunity to make sure that team of individuals is firing on all cylinders. And we're gonna have a standard of excellence here for everyone from the top to the bottom. Everyone is gonna be on the same page and everyone's gonna be committed to that excellence. That's the first thing Irvin talked about. And if they're not, then this isn't the right place. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that we're gonna institute and that's something that we're gonna get done. We both build successful companies so we know what type of team we want to run with and have working for us and with us. So because of that expertise, we're not only evaluating all the team and the players that we have on the floor, but we're evaluating everybody at this organization. And through our boss, uh, Jeannie, we decide, you know, we want the best people working with us. And uh, so, we're going to uh, see if we have the best people, and hopefully we do in-house. And if not, we've just got to get the right people. Hey, Rob, Kurt Sandoval from ABC. Congratulations. Thank you. you. You built an incredible career as a sports agent. You didn't have to do this. And I certainly understand the brand that is the Lakers. What, especially with the CBA coming up and, and the agents and the players that you have coming up for free agency, why, when that call or knock on the door came, what was deep in your heart to say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make this career change, and what does also the Michigan Alumni Association think of working with a guy? Like <laughs> we'll figure that out tomorrow when the Wolverines play the Spartans on TV. We have a bet going on. That's game. right. Um, you know, it, it didn't feel like a decision. It, it felt like a a true calling and as I thought about the opportunity this Lakers franchise and this Lakers brand has global significance one of my friends was working at a Syrian refugee camp recently and texted me a picture of one of the refugee children in a Kobe Jersey in Syria this brand resonates around the world and this brand the Lakers brand can give hope in the corners of the globe. If we're doing our job here and we're the Lakers, we can bring joy and hope to everyone across the world. That is an amazing opportunity, an amazing call. Um, and that's what Urban and I talked about when we met first in New Orleans. And we just both feel equipped with our life story and with our talents and how we fit together as leaders to answer that call and to bring that hope to the people that need it. Yep. Rob here in the, the back. You said it all. Sorry, Magic. Rob here in the back on the other side. Uh, the young core that you're inheriting now with D'Angelo and Ingram and the other recent draft picks now, do you believe that's a championship foundation that you're taking over here? I don't know, but I, I do know this. Um, we have a championship coach, and Irvin and I are gonna put in a championship accountability system mm -hmm. to make sure that any player that has the honor to put that jersey on is striving for greatness and is working hard and is a person of integrity. And all of those players are inspired by what he did and what Cobe did and what other captain did and the other Laker greats. We have a championship heritage. We have championship ownership. We have a championship coast coach. We have a championship president. We've got all the pieces in place. Let me just add to that. All of them have to get more consistent. Every one of them across the board. And if we can get them more consistent on a nightly basis, bringing it every single night. Like last night, it was a joy to watch. They were into it. They were into each other. Uh, they supported each other. They were talking on defense. You can just see that 
they were really playing uh, Laker basketball. So we got to get that all the time. How can we get that on more of a consistent basis? And that's what we have to do. And I, go ahead. Hey, Rob. Um, from your experience in being an agent, looking to put your clients in the best situations possible, what, what are the biggest challenges in just trying to predict how pieces fit together and how a team's going to form? Well, you've got individuals, and especially in free agency, that are making their own choices, and they're not just looking at one option. But I will tell you this, every single agent in the NBA knows that this platform is the best platform for their client um, in terms of marketing, in terms of the relationships in LA. We're in a city that has a powder keg of relationships, and Urban and I and Jim, we we want to tap into all that is Los Angeles. We're going to bring some of those relationships and make things even amplify things even more for player opportunities. Um, we've talked about doing workshops with the guys. Luke and I talked about this today. In this unique town, why not reach out to some of the titans of business and have them come and enrich the players and give talks. We're going to do things different that way. But every agent in the business knows that if you could place a client anywhere in the world, especially given the leadership that we have in place now, this is the best place for their clients. And we're going to start to see that happen rapid fire. Mm -hmm. um, over here. The last few years, it's gone beyond you know just one or two or even three coaches at this point. The Lakers have been really struggling on the defensive side of the ball. That's been a pretty it's been a pretty constant theme over the last few years when the team's been in the decline. How do you guys think you can fix the Lakers' defense in your roles? Do you think it's a personnel issue? Do you think it's getting a big man, a perimeter defender? What do you guys think you can do to fix the defense? Well, I think first of all, you know, we're going to take these last. I think we have 17, 18 games remaining and again we'll evaluate the talent we've been watching on both sides of the ball defense and offense we know we have to get better on the defensive end we have to get better with our rotations we have to get better with blocking out our man when the ball goes up we understand that um you know we we're going to get together with uh, luke and we'll talk about those things after the season and then we will see uh, where we end up in the draft and how we can improve not only the defense but improve our team. And so, uh, and then, you know, we'll have hopefully some money to chase some free agents and we'll see how that can help our team. So we're just, you know, we're not going to say we have a plan for that today. We're still evaluating everybody and also, but we'll sit down with Luke, of course, and then we'll go over that. But we understand championship basketball starts on the defensive end. I mean, Kobe won five because of that. I won five because of that. We understand that because that's also gets you into your your fast break and gets you into your early offense. So we understand that. So, you know, our players are working hard at it. Our coaches are working hard every day to, you know, improve our defense. And uh, we're going to get there, you know. But, again, we'll wait to after the season. And just to add to Irvin's point, I think the one thing I've seen with the great organizations that have had success recently, the, the coach and the general manager and the president, the basketball operation folks, have to be in lockstep yep. and have to be collaborating and sharing. And so Luke's got to implement and coach the guys on the hardwood, right? So everything that Irvin and I do is going to, of course, have Luke's input. And he's going to come and say, hey, this guy's really good at this, but we're we have a little bit of a you know, a hole needed in this area. And then our job is to kind of address those needs to make sure he has the best roster in the NBA. That's what he deserves. It's, it's all of us being on the same page. And then when we decide on what we can do, we take it up to the boss and she says yes or no. <laughs> and that's how it goes. Um, Irvin, here, yeah. Gonzalo, ESPN Deportes. Uh, Hispanic fan base has been very important for the Lakers Who? in the history, Hispanic, Hispanic. Okay. Fan, fan base. Mm -hmm. um, in the last few years, they've been feeling a little bit disappointed with how the things have been done mm -hmm. in the franchise. How are you going to work to engage them uh, again in this new era of the Lakers? Sure. 
Uh, let them know the African-American 6'9", that used to wear number 32, is just as upset and disappointed. That's all they need to know. I've had too many sleepless nights and hours. I've been cursing at the TV, and I normally don't do that. And uh, my wife said, hey, when this opportunity came, she said, you might as well coach them or be the president because you've been doing it at home anyway, right? <laughs> so uh, we're, we're going to win back the fans eventually. You know, we're going to build this thing right. And I think that once they see that, uh, you know, we're playing the, the game the right way. And uh, I thought last night was just a great example of that, just playing the game the right way. You just play basketball. Um, but not only are the Latino fans, you know, there's a lot of fans disappointed because the Lakers are the heartbeat of this city, right? And so how the Lakers go and the Dodgers go, that's how the city goes, right? And so we understand that. And so we want to get the Lakers moving in the right direction because we have uh, a lot of work to do, and we're going to do that. But I trust me, we're going to get the job done, and we work, we're going to work day and night to do that, to earn their trust back, to, to have all our fans happy about the product that's on the floor.